Well, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and perhaps even good evening. It's so wonderful to see you all here. My goodness, we have a huge, huge full house. And I know Moogler and many others of you have been asking for this topic. So I thought, you know, this is going to be a wonderful little working, chilled out working session that I can, you know, hopefully share with you and uh, get some of these amazing dresses that Mr. Daniel's been cranking out on YouTube. And it's just, it's just wonderful. I've been trying to, um, uh, do this on Twitch for the last, literally for the last couple of weeks or so, ever since he started sharing these things on his coffee channel. And I'll show you in a moment where that is. Uh, and yes, hopefully we can, we can have some fun together. Wonderful to see you all. So many fashion people in the house, so many just, you know, casual hangouts in the house. And if I haven't shouted anyone out in the chat, then it's just because there's so many of you, which is awesome. So anyone who's watching the pre-record, of course, hello, welcome. Let's get started straight away. Perhaps we'll, we'll get going here with a little bit of uh, music, perhaps. Um, thinking a little bit of alternative hip hop. If that is, uh, in fact, what's coming out, is it? Can't tell. Shall we press play? Will that help? Yes, there we go. <laughs> awesome. Let's see. Let me know if it's too loud, if it's too quiet. I don't want to drown my own voice out which is uncool. First things first, point of focus shall be put on so that we can all follow my cursor around. That's this little thing that I use to you know, highlight the cursor and it works live, it's very cool. Let's have a look at what we're gonna be doing today. I'm a big fan of Daniel. And Daniel is also known as Jet Set Geometry on both Twitch and on his coffee store. And he is wonderful. He is using Clo instead of Marvelous Designer, but it doesn't really matter. The two softwares are very, very similar, very compatible. And he's been uh, he's been having great success just sharing his casual workflow. Absolutely love what you're doing, Daniel. In case you're watching, it's wonderful. And uh, Daniel is even more wonderful. Not only does he share little um, snippets of what he's doing and mr zero calvin is a supporter just like myself very cool and uh, he's he's making these things but not only does he make them on stream and show you how he's making them in case you don't know daniel this course that i've brought into das studio recently it's a million polygons it's a bit it's a bit crazy not only does he model these things he also shares the working files on his coffee store absolutely free so if you're if you're not familiar with daniel hop over to his coffee store. I'm going to go and put a little link. Daniel's coffee. So if you want to follow along with these files, then, you know, drop by and download them. Uh, there's so many that he's shared. Let me have a look at the gallery. And uh, I've, I'm meaning to go through all of them. And uh, some things are more difficult than others. So uh, some are fairly uh, simple-ish outfits but what really makes them cool is that there's so much detail and of course you get to find out how he actually makes them which is very cool so I'm trying to bring this dress in I'm also trying to bring this dress in uh, there's so many little bits and pieces you can pick up from him this outfit I'd like to convert even just something as simple as this uh, polo uh, top here but it's you know it's it's the details that really that really make it pop you know I've tried it with uh, his first corset and that's a bit heavy on the geometry so the issue with that is that once it's in that studio it'll work but adding adjustment morphs to it will take quite a while to you know transfer things in and out and like saving an obj out of, of marvelous designer with this item takes about five minutes and then it takes another five minutes to bring in the morph in das studios so it's kind of crazy so i thought we're gonna go and use this dress here this is also nice. I'm going to use just this dress here. Dress one, live stream dress one. It's kind of a retro dress and it's fairly light on the geometry. So I'm going to go and use this. So if you click on this, not only do you get a larger preview, you also get a little download link here. So from Google Drive, let's go and bring that in. No preview available. That's totally fine. Let's go and just download it. See what happens. And yes, let's, uh, let's save it. Not just gaily open it right away. Let's just go save it first, shall we? <laughs> So because I want to share the result that we're going to be doing with you, I'm going to go and set myself up some some folders for this so that we can go and uh, put the textures in the correct place and all that. So let's do that first. Uh, this is it here, Stream Dress 1. Oh, it turns out I already had a copy. There we go. I've already downloaded this into my Marvelous Projects folder in a subfolder called Daniel. So I'm going to go and create a new folder in here just so that I can 
keep everything together here. This is going to be called stream dress. What did we say? Uh, one. There we go. Stream dress one. That's what he refers to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just before we give it a snazzy name, this is what we're gonna do. So stream dress one. Uh, that is it, isn't it? It is kind of the same thing in this folder here. I'm gonna really get organized. So one thing I'm gonna do is add myself another folder. This is gonna be for all kinds of OBJ files I'm gonna save out. There's also one that will be used for the actual product. So I need to make that a kind of a DAS library so that I can save all the bits and pieces into the, into the relevant folders. I'm gonna call this one here just product or maybe just exclamation mark product or maybe dress product, how about that? So this is gonna be the folder that'll contain all our DAS files. So in here, I need to make another one. I think I can also go Control Shift N, that'll, that'll do the same thing. So in it, I'm gonna make a people folder. And in people, I'm gonna make, because I'm gonna make it for Genesis 8, I'm gonna make a new folder here called Genesis 8 female. And in that, I'm gonna make another one called clothing. And in it, I'm gonna make uh, one more that'll be, it'll be something, that'll be the title of the product. So we're just gonna call it Stream Dress for now, but uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna change that probably. And this, inside this folder is where in DAS Studio, I'm gonna put all my bits and pieces. So this is an important organizational step that we need to take. Then uh, in here, on the, in the top folder of the Dress product, we need another folder and that's called runtime. I mean, it doesn't have to be called runtime, but I'll, I'll keep in line with all the old poser hierarchy file structure. In runtime, we're gonna have another one that's called textures. In tech, I know this seems like a lot of overkill before we even get started, but it's one of those things that, you know, we need to, we need to do. Daniel is completely wild. I totally agree, absolutely. Excellent Feral, he is just wonderful to watch. He does like three to four hour sessions and he shares these things on YouTube and on Twitch. So on Twitch, he's Jet Set Geometry and on, on YouTube, he's just called Daniel. Very, very cool. I've given him a shout out on my community tab if you want to find his channel. Stress product, runtime, textures, and then in textures, usually you have your vendor kind of shortcut. So I'll, I'll call myself WP Guru. And then in here, you have a folder for the actual textures of the dress. So in, in my case, I'm just gonna, it, once again, I'll just call it stream uh, dress one. And I'm gonna not use spaces on here because I'm particular. <laughs> so that's kind of the organizational headache out of the way, but it means I now have a place where I can save the texture straight out of Marvelous Designer. And I also have a place where I can save all these little bits and pieces that we're gonna create inside Dash Studio. Now, Let's go and take a look at the dress, perhaps. Is that enough? We've got the OBJs folder. We could also have a marvelous uh, designer folder, but I'm, I'm okay. I think I'm gonna go and just uh, paste the stream dress one. Uh, this is just the marvelous designer file here. We're gonna put that here. I think we're gonna go and make other folders in here like the dash scenes, but we'll, we'll do that as we, as we come to it. Let's take a look at the dress in marvelous designer and check out the geometry and do some UV mapping. Probably also quadrangulate the dress. I, I like keeping things in quads because it's just, the geometry looks a little bit neater. It also reduces the polygons down sometimes a little bit. So it's one of those things. There we go. You can never have too many folders. That's exactly right. Yes, that's exactly right. And also, Michael, the other thing is, uh, it's, it's stuff needs to be done, Chris, absolutely. Also, Michael, it's, it's going to save a lot of cleanup work. It also saves your bacon when in two weeks from now, I'm thinking, where did I save these things? I can't remember. It's one of those things. <laughs> Alrighty. Open project. We have stream dress v1. Stream dress 1, there we go. Let's go have a look at it. 
I don't actually know what Daniel has modeled these things around. I did get in touch with him, he hasn't answered yet. I, I said, is it okay if I share what I'm doing uh, on my coffee store for free as well, so that we that we kind of all um, uh, we speak the same language as such. We we like sharing things that we make, so I'm I'm hoping to um, I'm hoping that he's okay with it. He says he is in in a general message, but he didn't get back to me. I just, I'm hoping he's okay with it. If not, Daniel, do let me know. I think the first thing I'll do is Clo and Marvelous Designer have one major difference, and that's the background color of the 3D interface. I don't really like the the light color. I'm more into a darker background, like so. I think that's much easier on the eyes. I don't know what Daniels has modeled this around. So she looks a little bit like a Das character, but not exactly. So I don't think this is the Das character as such. So we're going to bring in uh, Genesis 8 character and then uh, do a fit here. But if you, this is this is what I love about his models. If you look at uh, the way this is made here, there's so many darts in the just in the right places and it just has that perfect fit i really like that i think the zipper is not a marvelous designer openable closable zipper so ideally if i find out how to how to make that work then i can make a i can make a morph in which the dress kind of opens and closes again uh, but i don't think we're going to do that today this might well spill into tomorrow by the way so so i suppose let's do that first let's bring in a genesis 8 female character and uh, and see how that goes. So, into Das Studio. I can show you my new product that's currently in testing. It's called Stream Safe Textures, and it'll look a little bit like this. So instead of using the gray character, I can actually use the uh, Genesis 8 characters. And if I double click it, then the Genesis 8 base character is going to appear in the center but with textures and underwear so I don't get into hot water with all the nudity bits and pieces so I'm going to start using that instead of the gray uh, characters and um, we are hopefully this is going to be on the DAS store fairly soon. Dorel and I have been working on this together and um, yes and I think this is this is kind of nice so voice nudity but it retains all the benefits of the Genesis 8 um, base figure. So let's go and save her out. I'm not going to switch her to low resolution. I'm going to just leave her as she is. And I'm going to put that also in the dress directory. So for that, I might, I might put that all into the OBJ's folder and call her Genesis 8 G8F A poll so that I remember what that is. I don't need to write the textures out. I might do it. I'll see how it goes. Usually I just bring in the, the, uh, the gray characters and that just works just fine. So let's go and remove this avatar here and bring a new avatar in. Import add obj. That's here. I should really put that in as a, as a little uh, shortcut on the side. Add as avatar, as das scale, and do not press this button. Whatever you do, do not press this button. The end of the universe is nigh. Let's see if this works. Textures and all. I know that, uh, yes, I thought so too, Moogler, absolutely. Yes, there we go, perfect. So I can see that this dress was not made for Genesis 8, but that's cool. She's fairly close to the fit. So let's go and uh, and uh, make it fit. Is there, anything, is there anything that we need to freeze it. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's go and let's go and do this thing. CPU simulation takes a little bit longer. It's a little bit more accurate. I think I do prefer to use the GPU the GPU acceleration when you when you're just doing test fits and all that. But for for things that we're gonna lock in as a as a morph I, I like using the uh, I like using the CPU simulation. It's a little bit slower but hey so before we export this, there's two things we need to do. Well, two things that I'd like to do. Well, one thing that I'd like to do, one thing that we have to do. The one thing that we can or cannot do is the geometry. Let's go and have a look at it. So this is the, the regular Marvelous Designer uh, geometry. That's just the triangles. And I don't know what the average uh, particle distance is here. I've tested the overall geometry. It was it was okay. It was like about 
50, 80,000 polygons, I think. So we're looking, I'm just looking at this uh, value down here, the particle distance, and just see what Daniel's used there. So um, five is, is okay. Anything lower than that, you just have to check, randomly check pieces. If it's any lower than that, like four and three, then that results in a lot of polygons. I'm just hoping he hasn't done that. So yeah, he looks like it's, it's five, it's, it's kind of cool. Okay, perfect. So with all of this, let's go and quadrangulate this. Let me zoom into the geometry and show you the difference. Quadrangulate, that's what we'll do. And that will not so much remesh, but just calculate the polygons differently. It's kind of a remeshing, isn't it? it takes a moment. And then we have fairly neat geometry where it's possible <laughs> I know what you mean, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, something if you do these simulations a lot and you do a lot of testing with, you know, pulling the dress out of body parts or making adjustments, then it can be a little bit tedious. Um, I can show you in a minute how how the how the GPU uh, speed works. That's that's nice. We don't get any error messages here, that's nice, but the geometry is just much neater. I like that. So I think what Marvelous Designer is trying, is doing, is it's trying to add quads wherever it can, but sometimes that might not be possible. Like on, on high density pieces that are very small, there's just, sometimes it can't fit it in and then it gives you a little error message that says, hey, I couldn't, couldn't quite get quads everywhere, so there might still be some triangles. Just so that you know, it says, essentially. I'm paraphrasing. Okay, so that's worked nicely. I might go and save this at this stage too. Save as project. I'll call it stream, I'll just call it dress. Dress V2, just so that I can get a, just get a, get a rolling count of, just before I make a change, I like to save something just in, just in case something goes, goes bad. It's not necessary, Brian, no, it's, it's, the geometry is a bit neater and it's a lot less geometry that gets exported. Um, and uh, that's mainly the reason why I'm doing it. So preserve all the detail that I can while, while getting rid of unnecessary polygons. It's not necessary to do that. And I don't think DAS Studio cares really if it's quads or triangles. I think Chris likes doing it as well. I'm thinking that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I follow Chris, I learned a lot from Chris. Give Chris a shout out with exclamation mark Chris in the chat, please. Chris streams on Twitch, if you're not familiar with his work. He likes using Marvelous Designer, or usually on a Monday with Marvelous Designer Mondays. And he uses uh, a lot of Blender and DAS Studio. He releases uh, most of his products either on Renderosity or Kofi. So very, very nice. So now that we've done that, one thing we have to do is take care of the UVs. So all the dress patterns, they're not currently in a UV tile. So as such, we need to UV map it and get it out, get the maps out, rendered out of Marvelous Designer, very important. So to do that, let's go and grab everything, including this, this is probably some, this is probably the metal pieces. And we head over to right click, fit UV to zero to one. And that does this. And while that's a nice attempt, there is a lot of room for improvement and I wish they would add a better packing algorithm to Marvelous Designer. So if I do something as simple as just move this guy over to the top here and then do the same thing again. Oops. Then we see that the UVs are much better utilized now. But again, there's still room for improvement. Blender can do this marvelously well. And uh, sadly, I think it's just a matter of, of teaching Marvelous Designer how to do it. And I don't think they've, they've done that yet very efficiently. There's also some overlapping parts here. This is not good either. They shouldn't really be eating into one another. And it's it feels such a waste having to do this manually when uh, when a computer could just figure this out, no problem really. But hey, that's for the wish list of Marvelous Designer 11, I think. So I'm trying to make it that the super basic packing algorithm can, can just do a slightly better job at this 
than it does by default. I'm essentially just helping this algorithm along by uh, first of all making sure these things don't overlap and also putting them in a place that leaves a lot of uh, uh, white space around. And the reason why I'm doing it is uh, I could just redo the UVs in Blender and that's, that's a very uh, viable alternative. I just have Blender take care of the packing, but that would mean I can't use the materials that I now have in Marvelous Designer, and that's that's what I'm trying. That's why I'm using this option. Uh, once I know more about substance, I'm more than happy to uh, to just ditch these UVs, redo them, pack them properly in Blender. But that means I have to redo all the materials, and that is just not something I can currently do. So that's why I'm doing that. Did you know, actually, I didn't know this until uh, last week, that if you do have an object with, with UVs and you want to change the UVs and you're thinking, I would like my object to have two types of UVs, you can do that with a simple morph target. Did you know that? I had no idea. You could literally just go and uh, have one OBJ with UV options one and then you have another OBJ same OBJ different UVs and you bring that in as a morph target on your first you on your first OBJ and then you can change between uh, first UV set second UV set isn't that amazing it's just a simple morph target I had no idea it's very cool so it doesn't have to be all that accurate it'll work if you don't do it accurately uh, but I'm just I'm just trying to be trying to be all nice here Trying to do it as good as possible. Yeah, so overlapping bits and pieces, which we don't we don't really want that. And then there's this thing here. If I go and put that kind of here. I think that's in the realm of no actually these two dress pieces they do overlap don't they don't they yes overlapping not good i think i've have i spotted everything are you spotting anything bad here you mean uv morph target absolutely yeah that works i didn't know let's go do that perfect see one more piece of improvement there we'll be okay we'll be okay this way you could also i suppose i could put these guys over here then move the whole thing down that would improve it a little bit further but we're not getting much more out of the width so i'm gonna i'm gonna just leave it i think i'm just gonna leave it before i export this i'm gonna just do because of the quadrangulation thing i'm just gonna go and uh, do one final uh, fitting before I export that. There we go. It's just settling down a little bit. Very cool. Very good point. No, you don't have to do that, Sid. It's, um, uh, this needs to only be done once, and this is now locked in to the OBJ. And it's mainly there so that I get the maps out of it. So this is then the next step. Let's go and make sure the text just come out of here in a reasonable resolution. Let's do that with this little button up here. The I don't I don't know what you actually call that kind of a fit suit with a camera type icon. The second one, big textures, it's called. Let's do that. I'll go and use mine. Let's bring that over here. I'll go and use uh, 4K textures for this. This is cool. All tiles is fine. We only have one tile and we want to have uh, all of these diffuse, metalness, normal and roughness. I don't think we have opacity, so we're not going to use that. But uh, the saving path, I can now use the textures directory that I've created in the earlier step for the DAS product, which is kind of cool. So let's see if we can find that. Stream dress one is the dress product. This is where I'm putting it under runtime textures WP Guru stream dress one. And I can give it a texture, I can give it a funky name. Say, say stream dress one. And that should, uh, you know, that should, that should be that. As soon as I hit save and save again, 
Marvelous designer will go ahead and bake those out at 4K resolution. Yes, I like that as well, Brian. I also like user interfaces like what we have now. The texture baking process is finished, so I'd imagine this window could be dismissed. Some of us who are not as clever as that think, well, what, what am I going to do now? I suppose they do it so that you can bake another UV tile separately if you wanted to do that. But I don't know, it's just... I, I would find it more helpful if it would just go and dismiss itself. But that's okay. We have come to love the quirks of the marvelous designer. Righty, I'm going to go and maybe save my project here. Save as project and I'll call it dress V3. That's the one with fixed UVs. Hey, Mr. Neville, how you doing, buddy? How's the healing process going? Neville, it's been... Uh, thank you so much for your comment. I really appreciate that, Neville. Uh, Neville's just had a double heart bypass a couple of weeks ago. Well, three, four weeks ago now. And uh, we haven't heard from you in a while. So it's been... Uh, we've been kind of half worrying. And then he, Neville comes back and says, Hey, I've been in hospital for a few weeks and uh, double heart bypass. My goodness. So, so glad you're, you're back on the mend, my friend. Very good to see you. So saved it out. Let's go and turn that into an OBJ that we can bring into Dash Studio. Export OBJ selected. You can do OBJ uh, if you don't have anything selected. I'll show you the difference actually. Uh, OBJ and then in here, I'll put this into the OBJs folder uh, and I'll call it, I'll just call it dress. I have a feeling we're going to call it um, retro dress rather than stream dress is a bit, is a bit uh, nondescript. I'm thinking, Let's come up with a funky name for this. I'm, I'm just going to call it Dress for now. Uh, or d Dress Main, just so that I remember. We can always rename that later. And when you do that, this dialog here comes up. And if you use this option, File, Export, OBJ, then all these things at the top are ticked. And you don't want to export your avatar. That's important. Otherwise, the OBJ will contain your Genesis figure. And then, of course, uh, that's not going to look so good in Death Studio. We don't really want that. So you have to switch that off. And so if you use, instead of using, if you select all the pattern pieces and you say save export OBJ selected, then that avatar is already uh, deselected at the top. Yeah, there we go. So this is essentially the same export options, but this is already deselected. And it's kind of, I've done it too many times that I've exported the Genesis figure as well. So I like to just... Um, grab all the pieces I want to export and then just, you know, it, it's not going to be uh, ticked there. Most importantly, single object, weld and thin. Then UV, a unified UV coordinates, PNG. That's that's cool. We want to tick that. We want to use Dash Studio Scale. We don't want to invert anything that just can stay as it is. So this, these are the most important things. Don't use the, don't export the avatar. Use a single object, otherwise it will split apart in DeForce. And use weld, so all pieces are kind of, you know, stuck together, welded together. Use thin, thick will add uh, geometry, so currently all the pattern pieces are planes, but if you make it thick, then they're technically very flat cubes with thickness. And uh, if you do that, I might as well show you, you can't actually weld them. Like, it doesn't, it, there we go, it, it, it recognizes it, you can't weld them. So we want to use thin and probably has to do some calculation and weld, very important. Otherwise, if you thick, use thick, then you can't weld and we need it to be welded. You can do it in other applications. You can use Blender to weld things, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Alrighty, let's see how this goes. Fair woman and I know a thing or two about being in bad health. <laughs> Many of you do. Yes, we wish you all the best, Neville. I hope it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a speedy recovery. I can imagine it'll take a few months for you to be back to your old self but it'll happen i'm sure which is which is nice otherwise this is the way to look at it otherwise they wouldn't have done the operation let me bring in a filament draw options node so we can go and uh, tone down the hdri just a little bit or we can just tone down the hdri that's actually also a great idea <laughs> yeah, i might as well just use the use this i'll go to eight thousand, maybe there it's not quite so blown up so let's go and bring in my dress, import, 
has a marvelous project is uh, Daniel, there we go, uh, stream dress, OBJ's dress main. Alrighty. Uh, custom, it just, it should just say Dash Studio. That's cool. On the import, there we have our dress. This is neat. With all the detail. No textures yet, so we'll, we'll take care of that in a minute. Let's have a look at the total geometry count, just because we can. The geometry editor will tell us that. Under tool settings, we're going to technically have to add all these things up, but it's kind of, uh, it's about, yeah, 55,000. That's that's the whole dress. 55,000 polygons is good. That's that's okay for clothing. If it's, um, you know, 100, 200,000 is okay. I think anything more than that, it's just it's just a bit too much. I mean, you, Dastory can handle it, but if you can't keep it down or if you can decimate it somehow, that's, um, your, your users will thank you later, I'm sure. We're going to fix these surface descriptions here so that we know what's what might as well do it uh, do it now if we can if we can discover what is what so this is kind of the collar yeah let's do that first let's go and, and fix the fix these pieces here before we run the transfer utility i'm pretty sure it's going to be okay it fits perfectly so that's that's great so let's call this the collar and pockets type thing collar and pockets I'm thinking. Then this here, I don't know what where that is. I can't see that lighting up. It's the mystery fabric. Could be something on the inside. 163 polygons. I don't know where they are. Is anything obvious disappearing as I do that? <laughs> okay, let's call that, uh, don't know. Let's call it unknown. There. <laughs> this here, that's going to be the dress fabric. Dress fabric. This, these are kind of, I could call this the, I could call this the embellishments maybe. Or the trim. Let's see what else was. Uh, this is kind of, this is the, Zipper. What do you call the the the, the zipper teeth? This zipper teeth, isn't it? That's that's it. So it's, it's the zipper teeth. Whereas then this here is actually the zipper. That's the zipper. What do you call that? The zipper handle. Does that have a name? Inside edge zone. Hey, that's that's good. I think might call it that. <laughs> Biscuit. Let's do that. <laughs> could be the armhole hems. Let's let's uh, have a look. That could be. What do you call the zipper handle? I'm going to call it the zipper handle. In case you have a better description for that, do let me know. Zipper handle. Because then we also have the the zipper, the zipper, the other bit here, the bit, the, the zipper, the zipper thing. What do you call it? Zipper pull. There we go. That's the one. Zipper pull. And then we have this other thing here, which is called the zipper... I don't know what what do you call it the thing the, the zipper the zipper handle if that's the pull what's the thing that makes the teeth come apart what do you call that zipper other thing slider there we go zipper slider I like it that's zipper slider together my friends we're strong unknown yes let's have a look I really don't know where that is here. The unknown piece. The good thing is it doesn't matter that much. I just thought it'd be a good idea to give it uh, to give it some some meaningful names, uh, just in case one of you wants to texture this. What was this again? This was the this was the biscuits just had it there. What did you say, biscuit? This was the inner edge zone. There we go. We're gonna call it that. Inner edge zone. Inner edge zone. And then we're just gonna go leave it there. If we do find out what it is, the unknown bit, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're totally gonna find out. We're gonna call it something else. Do you think? Is it? 
Oh, yes. Yes, that's true. I could contrast it. I'm not going to do it. It's. I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Pocket stuff, I'm going to call it. There we go. Pockets. Uh, what do you call it? Pocket embellishment. There, that's perfect. Done with material zones. I didn't want to spend too much time because it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because we have a single shader for every material zone because everything is on the same uh, texture map. So that's that's kind of cool. So we can go and uh, we can kind of ignore it. You don't really have to rename them. It's just, I suppose it's, it's nice that if you do want to do a texturing job or if you do want to do a small uh, color correction or color variation with the surfaces tab. It's kind of nice to know what is what. So let's, in fact, let's, let's, let's do that. Speaking of, um, speaking of, of, um, material zones, I'm just going to go set up the dress fabric. So I suppose, Durrell, what you're saying is uh, you could just literally go in here and say, color this, like this is what Chris usually does. He goes through all the material zones and goes and says, hey, this is this is that, this, we're going to give it a different color. And then we're going to go and give this a different color and so forth. And then you can see the material zones a little bit better. And then you can decide um, what you want to do with them. And uh, I didn't want to do that because it's, uh, I'm pretty sure they're all the same uh, material here. So I'll go and just take my dress fabric because it's the largest part. I'll take that first and go under base, give that our texture map. This is kind of a, an interesting way of setting this up. We have five texture maps that came out of Marvelous Designer and I'll go and map them. The diffuse goes into the base. So let's go and see if we can find it. Uh, under dress product, under runtime textures. Oh, we've got four actually, we've got four only. So this is gonna be the diffuse that goes in here. There it is, diffuse map. Then the next one is, is also under base. That's under glossy. It's the roughness map that goes into glossy roughness. And that's just this one here, the roughness map. The roughness map needs a value, otherwise it won't be acknowledged. So set that to one. And that's the roughness sorted out. And there's also the bump map. Oh, in fact, we have a normal map. So we go and put that under the bump channel, normal. Ding, there we go. It's already set to one, so that's cool. And then the last one is the metallicity map that goes under metal, metallic flakes. Uh, there it is, metal map. All right, so this is now set up the dress for one material zone, which is awesome. Now we need to go and copy this, copy selected surfaces, and put that on all the other surfaces. So literally everything except for the dress fabric that we've just set up. And when we do that, right click and say paste and everything's set up. That's kind of cool. So that is dress with textures. Happy people. <laughs> right, oh, that's clever, Chris. And you don't do materials in Marvelous Designer, right? That is, that's probably a, an advantage. So I suppose as soon as I work out how to use substance for that, then I probably won't do that either. I like the idea that you can use substance materials in Marvelous Designer now, but I would love the idea of not having to deal with the UV mapping inside Marvelous Designer. I like that they offer it, but unless they can offer a better auto packing mechanism, it's really difficult to get uh, materials at a uh, you know, at a, at a reasonable size that isn't 4K out of Marvelous Designer. In this case, I'm just using 4K, and um, yeah, so it's it'll be it would be easier if we had if we could um, if we could deal with that more efficiently inside Marvelous Designer. I think so, Moogler. Let's have a look. I thought so. Uh, metallic. Hello? No, it should be. Ah, you're well spotted. You're the man. Thank you, Moogler. Very good. Very good. I didn't set the metallics weight to one. It should have done. Should have done that. Ah, let's do the copying and pasting thing again. In fact, let's go paste it overall. Oh, now every channel has the same, the same metallic thing, does it? Does it? Yes. Well spotted. Thank you, Moogler. I like it. Let me go save my scene before we go uh, any swears else with this. 
switch off my mid maps in the filament draw options node so I don't see the seams on the character. Did you see that here? And when I didn't have that, the default is it being on and you can see that seam where the textures are. And that's just because uh, filament by default regenerates the texture maps. And for previews, that's not exactly great because you're not looking at the thing that you've put on your object you're looking at a copy of it and you never know where these issues creep in so if you ever see things like a, like a seam like here then that's and you're using filament then that's a filament thing and you can just switch that off under generate texture mip map so switch that off and then you're looking at the at the um, original maps and that's for every item in your scene righty let's go save this Uh, not actually a DAS project. This is a marvelous project. Daniel Stream Dress. And I'll make myself another folder for DAS scenes. Just so that I know where all my full scenes are. They're not part of the prop of the product or the, the thing I'm gonna distribute there just like for me to, to make sure things don't don't you know uh, don't fall over. <laughs> uh, stream dress v1. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it, Chris. Chris, you're looking into Quixel Mixer, is that right? And Materialize, that's another very cool thing. Let's go and get this dress rigged. That is something that we need to do. Currently, when I go and dial something funky into my Genesis figure, as you'd expect, maybe an adventurer pose like this one Arr! then the figure moves but the dress does not that's let's avoid that let's make sure the dress does also move so that is happening with the transfer utility i like accessing it from here from the scene tab in fact under assets transfer utility that's where you find it. it's very very exciting little thing i'll show you again on the scenes tab the little context menu i suppose you call it the hamburger icon on here you have assets and there's the transfer utility. There's a couple of different ways to, uh, to get there. We select a source item. This is gonna be the Genesis 8 figure or 8.1 or 3 or whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna use 8 because it, it then I can also use it on 8.1, but I can use it on both 8 and 8.1. If I use 8.1 for this, then I can only use it on 8.1 and not on 8. And the target is the dress. I'm gonna go and fit it down here, but I'm not gonna parent it. And I'm not gonna use a smoothing modifier just yet. I think we'll we'll do that later, but I don't think we have to. But we can. It kind of depends on, on how high the geometry count is. I think on in our case, it's, uh, it's okay. But on the core set, for example, if it had a million polygons to begin with, and then you add a smoothing modifier to that, that's just a lot of calculations that that studio will have to do. And that's just gonna take so much longer. So there we go. It is kind of working. The bottom part, I think I might make that deforce. Just the bottom part, not the top part. I think I'll leave that conforming. Uh, but it is working, so we'll, we'll, we're not going to worry about this. We're going to deal with this via a bit of deforce magic. There we go. Dress now moves with character. Everybody's happy. Goody. Okay. Let's put you back in the A position and save that before anything goes wrong. I'll just call that one Stream Dress V2. Yes, yeah, Substance, my goodness. <laughs> that was the missing link. I'm really, I'm really glad I got it, but I've only just scratched the basics. I, currently, I can drag and drop materials in. That's nice. I don't have great materials. I don't know how to make good materials or where to get them from, other than the ones that get... Um, <laughs> <laughs> other ones other than the ones that, that come with the starter essentials or the 30 that you get for free. You didn't, Sydney, there we go. This is this is one of the one of the super exciting things. So under the hood, what this does, this transfer utility is a very, very cool thing. It literally looks at the rigging as well as the weight maps of the Genesis figure and adds it to your target object. So it transfers everything that's in a vicinity there. So I think you, there's a little uh, there's a little assets transfer utility. There's a little 
there's a little option here that lets you have a look at the distance tolerance of these two objects so they need to be in in certain proximity to do that you can do it from one character to another as well it's very cool the uh, Thundorn games has the map from Thundorn has just put a posted a very exciting tip in which you can export a high resolution object of your figure like a subdivided object of your character if you wanted to have a HD version of combined morphs for example there's currently no way for us to do it so you can do it from one figure to another figure so he exports a subdivided version of his main character as a very high subdivided model and then imports it again and just uses the transfer utility to bring the rigging over from the regular Genesis figure to his own high subdivision figure and, uh, and then the figure moves and, and uh, works just like any other figure, but it's very, very high resolution without you having, um, you know, to do any, um, uh, so that retains your HD detail if you've sculpted some yourself and you wanna retain that. So yeah, transfer utility, magic, magic thing. And uh, it sets things up, including rigging, including weight maps. So if you wanted to have a go at weight maps now, you can do that. So when, when like the, the dress, will kind of split like this if you want for this to stretch less in the middle you could paint the weight map out a little bit and make it a bit smoother here we're not going to do that because it'll be uh, it'll be it'll probably be a, a deforce job it'll be easier to do that but yes, that that works, and especially with thing with things like body suits or tight fitting clothing this is uh, this is really nice. I think before we continue, I want to go and uh, have a look at some adjustment morphs. So uh, one thing I'd like to do is have the option for the dress to be a little bit longer. So uh, one longer dress morph I'd like to have that just pulls the dress down so that we have a knee length or slightly longer than knee length version if, uh, if users want to do that. That's one thing. If I, if I knew... Oh, that's, you know what? There's an issue with the zipper here. Oh, that's not good. So we need to have a look at the zipper. Yeah, I think that was a, that was an issue. The, the zipper handle has moved a little bit. <laughs> we could, uh, we could just fix that with a morph as well. Zipper adjustment. Yeah, that wasn't good, was it? It's, did that look like that in Marvelous Design? I must have. Maybe I've moved it. It could have been. Oops. Yeah, it looks like it was kind of wonked up here. <laughs> Maybe the simulation did that. Oh, no problem. Gives us an opportunity to do this whole thing again. Yeah, I think that before I put that in place, uh, this was pinned, I suppose the, the simulation did something that wasn't so good. Let's go adjust this. I don't I don't think he set it up as a zipper. There, there is a way that you can do it. I'm not sure if he did that. But then it's been a while since I've since I've tried it, so let's go try this again. Uh, it is already pinned, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. This would be ideal to uh, to use adjustment morphs for. Uh, you can even rig it if you like. But yeah, I think that'd be that'd be good to have to have people be able to play with the zipper. That'd be nice. And there, this is where it should be, right? Is it a bit too too low? Kind of here. There. Now it's in the right place. Okay, no worries. We're going to have to export the dress again, uh, but the transfer utility is easy to bring back. And uh, before I delete this here, I'm going to go and save myself that uh, that shader out. So it's a, it's a shame we've done all the, the material zones already. <laughs> I might have to do those again. But the most important thing is that I'll go and save myself a shader out in here. It doesn't matter which uh, surface I choose. I might save that into this library now. Let's go, okay, let's do these things. Let's do multiple things. On the content library tab here, use that little hamburger icon and use the content directory manager. <laughs> oh, you think it's upside down? And in here, 
I'll map this directory that I've made for this for this DAS product to DAS to DAS Studio. So that's under uh, DAS Studio formats. I've got quite a few here. I'll go and add myself another one, and that's the directory that I've uh, I've made earlier there, painstakingly, under Daniel Dress. No, that's not it. That's a different dress. Dress Stream Dress One dress product this is the folder i'm going to map and when i do that it'll appear in my library tab here in my content library and what that allows me to do it takes a moment what that allows me to do dress product here it is uh, i can see my people folder now genesis 8 female clothing and then their stream dress so this is where i put the dress the, the correct version uh, so that that studio can save out the definition as well as the geometry i'm not going to do that just now i'm going to stay in the top folder here that's the one i'm not going to distribute with the product that's just something i'll set up with oh that's well actually shall i let's let's do that under stream dress um, let's do that i'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call that materials and in materials this is where I'm going to save this shader out now so maybe with the pockets I'll go and just I'll just zoom this in that I can um, you know that gives me a kind of a nice-ish thumbnail and a shader is this thing that allows me to dress shader that allows me to save out the surface properties of one selected surface and it doesn't matter which one it is i'm not going to compress it it allows me there it is it allows me that when i go and bring in the new and improved dress because this one i'm going to go and delete when i bring in the new and improved dress with the adjusted zipper i'll be able to just apply all the surface properties with one click and that's just that's just very easy there oh okay thank you i'll have a look at that <laughs> i'll have a look at that then at least we can um, we can find the correct naming conventions for what the parts of the zipper are called thank you i appreciate that import dress main the good thing about this is it gives us an opportunity to run the transfer utility again here so this is what i meant about the shader that's this thing that i've saved here if i go to surface and i'll go and select all my surfaces now the moment i just double click on this shader i'll just apply it and boom there it is so i don't have to do that setup again with the maps the, this shader will just work on any of these surfaces of the dress so that's that's kind of nice so now let's go and run the transfer utility again because it is magic we should do this <laughs> time and time again we'll go and pick genesis 8 as the source so whatever figure we want to copy from then target is what we want to copy to like dress and um, fit is okay we want to fit but we don't want to necessarily parent and smoothing modifier we can do it manually later but it's a nice option that we that we have it here we might as well do it let's let's, let's do it see what happens smoothing modifier is the one that it's it's an it's a way that that lets Death Studio uh, calculate a collision item. Yeah, there we go. That looks it looks still a little wonky, but it looks much better than it did before. So I'm glad we did that. Smoothing modifier is the one that that lets Death Studio work out is the figure colliding with a piece of clothing, and then you know if you smooth it, then there's there's less poke through or less you know. <laughs> I know, Durrell. One of those tips, huh? Yes, it's you know, good for poke through kind of thing. Okay, so the thing that separates the teeth is the slider body and the little hanging tab is the pull tab, right? Right, 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 cool. Okay, so why don't we just change that right now? So, uh, surfaces. Oh, actually with the geometry uh, tool selected. Oh, so yeah, this, this is the other thing that's that's quite nice to know. So now that we've gone back to the dress in the tool settings with the geometry 
uh, editor selected, you see that we have a lot of face groups and a lot of regions. Uh, the surfaces remain unchanged, so they're the ones that uh, basically Marvelous Designer defines in the OBJ, but we now have face groups and we have regions. And those are the things that the transfer utility added to our item of clothing alongside rigging as well as weight map. So this is all the stuff that happens. So now it's easy for us to select bits and pieces from our dress. So we've got several uh, groups there now. Let's see, what did we call this again? This was kind of the, the uh, collar. I'll just call it the, the collar and, and that. How about that? That's, that's, that was good, right? Collar and that. Good stuff. Then this here is... Was that? That was the unknown bit that we couldn't quite work out. Oh no, that was the... Like Brian said, this was the... Pocket stuff. Pocket embellishment. There we go. Then we have the dress fabric if we're absolutely sure this is good now. This is the Dorel said that, right? Or was it, that was Biscuits. Biscuits said this is the inner something, something inner, inner lining, I think, was it? This here is then the zipper. This here is the slider body I'll call it the zipper slider body ah <laughs> and then we have this which is the zipper pull tab I like it I like doing this collectively with you guys this is this is really nice I really appreciate that all these little bits and pieces and workflow tips and naming conventions also, it's much more fun doing it with you than it is to do this on my own. I've got to be brutally honest. It's much more fun to do this with you guys. So there we go. Let's go and save that as a full scene. Stream dress V3 as we're getting there. And then we'll try getting an adjustment more for the length. No, that's right. The shader only defines a uh, channel. So it basically, whatever you pick, this this will be saved out as a shader. So you can't have multiple. You can, I think you can, but it'll be saved as uh, as as uh, a separate uh, shader. So one shader would describe whatever this surface has on here, but it doesn't have the name of the surface. So as that. This, no matter what it's called, can be applied to this and that and that and that. And that's just whatever properties are set, but not uh, what the what these material zones are called. That's defined um, exactly. That's defined in the OBJ. And if you want to save all of these together, and I might as well do that while I'm here, uh, you can save this as a material preset. So this is if you have multiple material zones like we have, and you're not intending to change the names of them and you want to save all of these together then you can do that not as shaders but as a material preset and that lets you then go and uh, and apply a shader to every single material zone of the dress so that would work uh, like that so you just you can just select the dress and then here under materials i might just frame it up like like so and we'll change the thumbnail later. You head over down here to uh, the little plus icon and save it as a material preset. So this is now not a shader. I'll just call it dress mats. This is now saving the definitions for every single surface here. Ta -da! There we go. This is one shader. This is the whole material preset for the whole dress. But if I, I think if I rename the material zones now, then I couldn't apply this because this relies on the material zones to be named a certain thing rather than, uh, you know, if I change it and I try to apply that material zone, it says I can't find that surface. It's not defined in the OBJ, the fact that the way it's named in the DUF file. So error is happening. <laughs> Munir, hello, Fricket. hello back from Miami Beach. Good to see you. I'm going to grab myself another coffee before we make that adjustment morph. 
length morph. This, this is what I'm trying to do, uh, length morph. And then also uh, I'm gonna have a look at some of the auto follow adjustment morphs that will, that will allow us to put something like a breast morph in that hopefully won't make the breast area collapse as, as you make an adjustment. This is quite common when that happens, especially on custom characters. And uh, breast morphs are a good example of that. So if, you, if I dial one up, and we'll sh I'll show you how to, how to fix that. If I go to my Genesis figure and uh, find like a breast shape morph, for example, then you'll find that this area of the dress kind of collapses. This doesn't look good. This is not what the dress should be doing. And it's the uh, breasts is often, often an issue. Uh, because like look here so what what's happening here is that the that das studio is saying uh, i find this morph inside the figure and i know what to do with the with the genesis figure at that point but the dress doesn't have that morph so das studio says well if it doesn't have it i'm gonna go and just follow as closely as I can on the uh, on the dress but of course it gets it wrong because it's trying to it's, it's putting artifacts in here that we don't want so what we can do is uh, is make another fitting inside Marvelous Designer grab that out as a morph and then make sure the dress has that morph with that particular name and then that studio knows oh that morph exists in the dress so I can instead use that and then it'll it'll follow better so let's let's try that after the adjustment morph Blue Owl Productions, thank you so much for the super chat donation. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Very nice. <laughs> that is so nice of you. <laughs> Very nice. Look at the coffee. Oh, it's like you bought me a coffee. I appreciate that. Alrighty, adjustment morph. So I'll do this in hexagon, I'm thinking. I'll just go and use file. <laughs> that is very nice. I always love it when that happens. Send the whole thing over to Hexagon. And then just uh, grab the bottom bit and just pull the whole dress down. Use a soft selection. Bob's your uncle, Betty's your aunt. Uh, Hexagon does have its... It's... Uh, oh, it did not put the figure in. Maybe it's because it wasn't parented. So let's say no. I'd like to have the figure in there as a reference. So I'll go and parent my dress underneath the Genesis figure. And then I'll go say file, send to hexagon. Much better. And that coffee tastes just so much better. <laughs> and that's the crab, how exciting. Hey, this is another little animation project that I'm planning. I would like to use, there she is, perfect. I would like to use a Genesis figure as with the with the rollerblading outfit that's kind of you know rollerblades from uh, from right to left through the bottom part of my screen I'll see if I can make that happen so I don't know about the geometry if I can select something like a... hello there we go if I can select something like the bottom line here I'll certainly try with the loop selection from here. Let's see if it loops. It might not. It, no, it doesn't do that. <laughs> Dang, what a shame. It doesn't want to do between. Between is also a nice, nice way of doing it. So from here to there, it's probably a better, better suited for, yeah, that kind of works but I'll have to, it might stop working at any moment. <laughs> I mean, there we go. Oh, perfect. That's kind of what I want. I mean, it's not It's not super accurate, but it's. it's got the gist of it. It's not gonna matter too much because I'm using the, oops. I'm using the soft selection for this. I just wanna grab all this really, minus maybe, minus the pockets. I'm just gonna elongate the, the rest here. I don't, I don't know if the, if the pockets, is that a good idea to use the pockets as well? In my downward journey, could do. I mean, I, I'm not entirely sure if I want that. I don't think I want the pockets to, to stretch. So let's go and make sure the softness is 
or it's more like the radius of the soft selection kind of goes here. Softness is more like the fall off here. So I'll leave that on kind of 50 here. Let's try this and then we make it longer and a bit wider at the bottom as well. Maybe even slightly, slightly longer if I can find the, find the manipulator here just over the knee like so and then we'll go and make it a bit wider. So that's the little yellow icon. And then hopefully DeForce is gonna is gonna settle that, maybe even slightly longer. And give our people options. We turn it into a long dress. That could be interesting. Okay. Adjustment morph made. Ooh, Stefan, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> that is very cool. Wow. I've never seen a yellow sticker before. That is, that's, that's exciting. Yellow, that means it's, it's vast amounts of money, I, I believe. Wow. <laughs> that is so nice of you. I appreciate that. Wow. I also don't, don't exactly know what RSD is. It's, that is, uh... Is that that's could be South Africa? Could could that be? I don't know. <gasps> Thank you so much. It is. It's uh, YouTube will tell me later what that is in US dollars. But I very much appreciate it, my friend. Awesome. Let's go and say <laughs> yes. It will st stretch the textures. Absolutely yes. That's uh, that that's that's one uh, that's one reason why maybe such an exaggerated morph might not be the best idea. But as a you know as an example, you'd usually probably use um, smaller morphs, or you can even use this. Um, uh, do this better in in marvelous designer but as a as an adjustment morph example let's go and send this back to das studio with literally nothing else and then let's just hope our our users aren't going to use a full length of that uh, create a morph that's exactly what we want to do and we can call it instead of morph we can call it skirt length like so length uh, make unique yes absolutely and morphs morph loader we can leave it there we can give it a we can give it a different uh, loader perhaps um we'll worry about that later except morph successfully created so if i go to my dress now i get this uh this group here morphs and skirt length and it works look at that yes and it stretches the text just quite badly so this was this was not a good idea biscuits thank you so much for the heads up yes this is not a great idea to do it that way so this looks pretty terrible <laughs> it's a very good idea it looks pretty terrible you can make it shorter as well usually so i think what what you could do is either spread this out more so you could make the make the morph so that it doesn't doesn't just take a short amount of your geometry and then stretches it like three or four times that's not good uh, you could use a larger area so you, i could have used everything from up here and stretch that so then that would make the bottom part stretch less let's go and change this so that it doesn't do uh, minimum so that people can't make it shorter that way yeah this is this is really this is this is not so good biscuits you're absolutely right <laughs> We could try it again and use more, but then we're probably going to stretch the pocket. So I'll just I'll just leave this as an example and hope you find you find better uses for it. So um, you can maybe if we find a percentage that kind of works to about here, say say 20% is the maximum we'd like people to use it because that looks terrible. We can we can make that happen. We can just go parameter settings and say the limit is now that the maximum is 20. And you can even if you rather people don't see this between 1 and 20 you could just also go and change this from percentage to no percentage 
I think you can just go and enable, disable that percent, and then you just have this as a as a figure, like as a, as a number there. Works within limits, but yes, absolutely. I could do it in MD. Yes, that's true. We could just make it an MD and make that that part a little bit longer. Uh, that's not going to change the geometry. Yeah, that's a good point. We could we could try that too. I might as well rename this skirt length. Uh, I'll call it skirt length. Hex maybe, so that we remember what is what. That's not something I've uh, I've tried before, but yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go close hexagon down again. I think that's one of those quirks about hexagon. You just have to close it down before you send another morph. And we can try grabbing. Ah, we've got these pieces here. Let's go over to uh, simulation. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. So I suppose I think we could select a line. Not so much edit. I'm just uh, I just like to select that line. What's the, what's the line selection tool again? See, this is how how long I've been out of Marvelous Designer. And that's not it. Like this just selects pattern pieces. Isn't there isn't there a way to just select a uh, just a line? Was that was that this edit pattern? transform point segment was it this one well yeah that's it isn't it this here and now i can go and and drag that whoops no 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 go back no don't do it i don't want to i don't want to mess with the design I, I don't think i know enough about marvelous designer to do that i remember being able to just select the line and just drag it down oh would it Oh, what was is that how it happens would marvelous designer literally change the geometry if i make this this part longer would that add more more polygons here ah. right oh okay thank you biscuits good to know yes it's trying all kinds of synchronization things because i clicked the wrong button oh, <laughs> crazy good point i suppose also the dress isn't exactly designed to make it longer or shorter if you use a different pattern the stretching isn't going to be that noticeable that's another option that you have let me see if i can undo this oh man when things go horribly wrong good thank you chris i didn't i didn't realize that yes that makes perfect sense and hence the pattern wouldn't be stretched because there's just more geometry yes and also the uvs would be different a good thing I've saved this, so uh, I don't have to worry about too much what Marvelous Design is doing, as long as we go back to the previous state here. <laughs> so we have one adjustment morph. That's cool. We could make many others. So I could add, I could go into Blender now and go and uh, uh, change what my zipper is doing. Or I could do it in Marvelous Designer if I move, fiddle around with the zipper. Let's have a look what we do about this whole um, uh, breast collapsing issue here. This is kind of an auto follow morph. So for that, I'm going to go and unparent my dress again, just because that's easier for me to work with. Come on, unparent, there we go. And uh, now I'll go and remove my dress. We're still in the regular, uh, in the regular, um, what's it called? It's still parented. Oh yeah, but the other the one thing that we wanted to have a look at, uh, find a morph that doesn't work well when you dial it in. So on the Genesis figure, uh, some of the breast morphs, they really don't work well. Some do, so go, go through it and test them. So like breast cleavage kind of work. No, it's it's also it's got that slight distortion bit here. It kind of works though. Uh, a diameter gone heavy. How about heavy? Yeah, heavy has that issue as well. Heavy breast morph. Let's use the heavy morph for now. Crank it all the way up to 100. Poor dress. I hope it's gonna it's gonna be okay. You can see the the. Uh, the stretching here as well and now I'll go and remove the dress control click on the eyeball icon and just use this Genesis figure as it is and just export her out essentially as a morph so we can bring that in as a morph target in to Marvelous Designer so we don't bring this in as an avatar we bring this in as a morph target on our avatar 
So let's go and do that. First of all, export this thing. And uh, oh, before I do that, I can be really clever and I can see, I can have a look what this breast heavy morph is called under the hood. So that'll save me another step. So in here, whatever morph doesn't work, go into this little parameter setting dial and have a look what this is called. So there's a name and a label. Label is just something that is for us so that, that humans can recognize what it is. But name is something that Das Studio knows it as. And uh, PBM is a full body morph. So PBM breasts heavy. This is what I'm going to call it. If I go and copy this out, control C, I can just cancel out of this. I just need to know what it's called. And now I'll go and export my Genesis figure with that name. So I know what that, uh, what the name of that morph is. I'll put that into the OBJs folder, maybe even in a sub folder here. Um, I might call that fit morphs, just so that I can keep them separate from many of the other morphs here. And I'll paste in that name that I've just copied out, that PBM breasts heavy wavefront OBJ, save that out. We'll go back to Marvel Susanna. Hopefully this hasn't changed anything. Let's just, let's just hope it hasn't. And uh, in here, I can go and bring that in. This is the morph target thing now. So file import add OBJ, do that. Find where it is, so PD and breasts heavy. And in here, this is kind of important now. You don't add it as an avatar, you add it still but use morph target and that will now, it's clever enough to recognize which object this is supposed to go on. So I don't have to select the avatar, I have to select the dress or whatever. It, Marvel Susanna will work this out by itself. Hit okay. And as long as the geometry matches, which it does not, uh, that's a shame, isn't it? It, uh, it should have worked, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, don't know why, but let's figure out why that didn't work. If it did work, it will just shape our avatar now to the thing that we've just made. So let's say we probably made a mistake here. Could be eyelashes, could be, could be this. Could be that I accidentally added the dress to it. I'll just go and try and exporting it again. See if I've, I've, got, the, I've got the settings right here. Ignore invisible nodes, that was correct. No, is that actually all correct? And unless something went wrong with the previous avatar, could also be, don't know, could also be that the filament draw options node is what's confusing it. I might just switch that off, make that invisible as well. Let's try again. PBM breasts heavy, 2600, cool. The mouse is here. <laughs> uh, yes, let's go and... Uh, Let's go and uh, let's go say yes, accept, perfect. See if that works. File import OBJ. Add as morph target. Or do I actually have to select the avatar? Maybe I do have to do that. Import add OBJ this as morph target and no, doesn't work. What a shame. That's sass. Okay, actually. <laughs> Neville, see you later, my friend. Have a good kip. It shouldn't be biscuits um, because it's, it's un first of all, it's unparented and it's invisible. So it shouldn't have happened. But it's an interesting one. Let's just go and reset this and export her as she is again as Genesis A pose. Yeah, do you know, actually it has, it's a, the, the file size is a lot less as well. Interestingly, my fit morph, I'm just looking at that is about 2,600. Whereas the Genesis figure should be about 10,000. So I don't really know what happened there. It's a tricky one. Is anything, deselected on the figure hopefully there isn't let's try it again let's try it again i'm gonna go and export the genesis figure out again just as as she is maybe even with with fit morph i'll call it unmorphed 
G8F unmorphed. Ignore invisible notes, yes. And now I'll go and crank up the... What did we say again? Was it the breast heavy morph, right? I think. PBM breast heavy, cool. Yeah, now it looks like it's the same amount of polygons. Don't know what happened there before. I don't know. So let's do that. Exists, yes. Don't know what happened with my first avatar then. But hey, it's one of those things. <laughs> if, I, if at first you don't succeed, let's go and get rid of her and bring in my new version. Import OBJ. So this is now the unmorphed version. And yeah, now they're exactly the same uh, the, the same size. So open as avatar. That's what I want. Looks exactly the same. I really don't know what the difference was. Some spurious stuff got saved there. Don't know. Is she chunky? Is she low res now? She looks like she is. I mean, that would explain it. I always like to find out the reason, you know, for things. <laughs> when things don't go wrong, I'm thinking, well, there's got to be a reason for that mesh resolution. Oh, now she's base. Was that the was that the difference then? Well, that's easy to explain then. Let's go and make her high resolution. Because we didn't mean for... Oh, maybe maybe when I brought in the hexagon morph, maybe the hexagon switched it back to, uh, to base res, because I don't recall her being base res. Let's try that then. Let's try that then. Well, that would certainly explain it. Let's go get rid of her. <laughs> Let's bring in my original morph. Well, original, not the morph. The avatar. There we go. 10 meg. That should be the that should be the ticket. See, that was the explanation. Ha ha. Yeah, the dress. I don't I don't actually recall changing either dress or figure to base res or to high res. Let's see what the dress is. Yeah, the dress is also base, but the dress only has base, so the dress uh, doesn't have a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, let's try this again, guys. With the figure selected, export PBM breasts heavy in the fit morph exists. That's cool. Let's go do this again. And import add obj fit morphs, which now also has uh, the correct size. So that should now work. Come on, shall we do that? Let's do this. Add morph target. Check it out. Yes, look, it's worked. Perfect. So it does this now, and now it applies this morph on my Genesis figure. And it'll do that uh, while simulating. Whoops. There, it's done already. It does this over 30 frames. And this is what Marvelous Designer thinks that should look. And it certainly looks better than the than the kind of breast artifacts that we had there before. You can always go and... and uh, hit space again and let it let the simulation settle uh, for a little bit longer that's that's cool i mean this is a very tight fitting dress so uh, usually you would have a slightly wider garment i suppose <laughs> or you'd also make other adjustments like push the breasts up or whatever that's just, that's you know completely up to you that should do the trick and now this is kind of the, the funky part here so now i'm gonna go and uh, like I like I did before, I'll go and select all my patterns and say file export obj selected. And I'm just going to go and save over this morph here only because it's easy for me to not having to remember another name. If I do screw it up though, then that means I have to go and um, uh, and uh, find, another <laughs> find another option here. So I'll go and save over that also cuts down on the amount of intermediary files that I need. Same settings as before, unified UV coordinates, single object weld and thin. And hit OK. You don't have to, I mean, while the morph target is applied, the Marvelous Designer already does the simulation over as many frames as you say, but you can just do that and let it let it settle a bit longer. It's, a, it's similar to saying simulate over 60 frames or over 90 frames. 30 usually does a, does a fairly good job, as hopefully, as we'll see in a moment here. So now I'll go and select my dress. 
This has now got the horrible morph that Das Studios made. Now this, this, let's see if this works. So I'm going to select my dress and say Edit Object Morph Loader Pro. And now I'll go and bring in that morph that I've just saved out of Marvelous Designer. And we'll do this a few times because, you know, things can go wrong. Can slash do go wrong. <laughs> OBJ's Fit Morphs. So breast heavy morph. And so the advantage of saving over this uh, morph with this complicated name is that as I bring it in, it will already be named that. So here in the in this little dialog, it'll already name that morph the, the way it's supposed to be called. And I'm gonna make it unique, I think. Let's see what I'm doing here. So primary figure from graft facet order or vertex only. It's let's try both options. I, I never know which one. Chris, which one works best? Is this does it matter at all? <laughs> and it is nerve-wracking, yes, absolutely. I'm gonna try vertex order just because it's the top of the list. You could I'm gonna make it unique, that's cool. Not unique, okay, cool. Let's go deltas only then. <laughs> let's do that. And uh, and I think that's that. Let's see if it works. Reverse deformations, right, yeah, good point. Reverse deformations. <laughs> Boom. Geometry imported and morph created successfully. And there we go, it snapped right into place. So that was, in fact, those were the correct settings. Let's do this with basically all the breast morphs and then just, just uh, uh, put them all in there. So now this is cool. This is literally just snapped into place. And now if I go and grab my figure here breasts heavy i can go and adjust it is this awesome oh what look at the geometry changing of the whole dress this is beautiful this is fantastic and it wouldn't have happened had we not put that in auto follow morph woohoo success somebody scream this is great i love it when it happens <laughs> This is fantastic. Quick, save it, save it before something goes wrong. <laughs> we have so much more work to be done. <laughs> Deltas only, yes, absolutely. Deltas only and reverse deformations. Gotcha. Okay. Indeed, Callie, that's, that texture doesn't stretch so much. Let's try out some other morphs and I'm just going to use the breast area because it's such a classic of things that go wrong all the time. Uh, and also how I then work in Marvelous Designer to make sure I go back to the unmorphed avatar. So it is in, in here, it is, um, it is kind of tempting to say I'll import another morph target on this so that that will now shape into a different size breast shape whatever but that's not smart so in, in marvelous designer once we bring in the next morph it's best to get back to the regular genesis morph without morphing from this position if you know what i mean it makes more sense when i show you in a moment let's go find ourselves another morph that doesn't work it's like the breast show interesting let's go let's go through all the breast morphs and see <laughs> see what doesn't work but whoops so the shapes are this heavy. How about natural? This natural one. Well, natural has that problem as well. So natural is not it's not good. Let's do natural. Uh, perk is probably okay. Yeah, perk is doesn't that's okay. Shapes they usually have an issue. Yes, that that usually is cumbersome. Yeah. So anything that is kind of custom. Yes, they all have this this issue that the geometry doesn't quite doesn't quite like it. So I might not. Uh, we have a bit of time, so I can I can do a couple more. Any any particular requests? <laughs> Upward slope works, so we don't have to do that. Under curve, the under curve also has an issue. So if you're a content creator, you have to literally go through all of these if you want to deliver a good product and spend a ton of time uh, fixing all of these. Yeah, let's try natural. That's something that could do with improvement, perhaps. 
Oh, the, yeah, that's a good idea as well. We can do that. Let's do that. Let's go a full body morph instead. Yeah, not just a breast morph. That's a good idea. Uh, let's go and and see what I uh, what I have on my Genesis figure. No, that's the wrong. Actor full body people. Yes, like also slimmer people have the same issue. So like Bridget is is maybe an example. Bridget works. No, Bridget has also some distortions here. Bridget Alexandra. Well, Alexandra works quite well, I must say. So no fix needed for Alexandra. Who else? Who's Elizabeth? Yeah, Elizabeth has that issue. Gail Evelyn. So Hagar. Hagar is very is very custom. She's very slim. Mrs. Chow, that's a good idea. Let's do, let's give it Mrs. Chow body. Yeah, so that would be ideal to put a, to put a full body morph in there for Mrs. Chow. Yeah, that would, Mrs. Chow could wear this dress and it would be, it would be a much better fit for her. Mrs. Chow. Ruju. Yeah, we can also get away with not fixing that. That's also cool. Pulse Morph. Yeah, we can do that. Sydney. Sydney could do it. Tell you what, let's do Mrs. Chow then. There's the girl. Yeah, the girl is a uh, is a very um, very stylized morph, so she could do with improvements. I'll use Mrs. Chow. I think I like Mrs. Chow. Let's do that. Mrs. Chow, where were you? Mrs. Chow body. Ding. There we go. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put. Let's do uh, one full body, and then one uh, pose morph. Yeah, we'll do that. Let's let's do that. I like it. I like it. The pose morph is exactly the same as as all these things. So let's go and uh, let's go do Mrs. Chow first. So we'll remove the dress, and save out the Mrs. Chow morph. Also, let's have a look what Mrs. Chow's called in here under parameter settings. FBM Mrs. Chow eight. I like it. Let's go and copy that and export Mrs. Chow out with that name, FBM Mrs. Chow. All right, let's bring in Mrs. Chow. So in Marvelous Designer then, to get this back to, to the regular uh, character, it's not enough to undo. I, I like using the history panel for this, and this is like all these bits and pieces that I've done recently. It's kind of nice that Marvelous Designer remembers all these things. And history means you can now go and uh, and see where uh, where I've been. So I'm uh, I'm on. I was zoomed in, wasn't I? Oh, so so sorry about this, folks. So down here on the on the bottom, uh, this is where I added my avatar, then I simulated it. This is where I deleted the avatar and so forth. So I'll go back to add avatar here. That might work. A single click's enough. Right, and add avatar seems to still have the morph target that I had applied. So this is kind of not really uh, what I want. So I need to go back to delete avatar and load myself a fresh copy of it to get back to the zero morph, which is GF8 unmorphed. Actually, that was in this folder, wasn't it? There. Add that as an avatar. So I could apply the morph target on the previous morph, but that would mean I'm not shaping it from this position, and that sometimes causes issues. So I like going back to this avatar. So import add obj. Fit morphs, FBM Mrs. Chow and add this as a morph target. And this is what I was saying earlier, uh, Sydney, you can do the morphing over more than 30 frames. It'll just take longer to do that. I prefer to just use it or leave it on 30. And then now Marvelous Design will simulate over 30 frames, like now. And you can see that because the body size kind of uh, varies the the dress is almost like it's not quite settled so now I would just press space and just let it let it settle all that all that cloth a little bit until I'm happy and then we have a good morph but you can just say try and move this over more frames so if you have an extreme morph like a lot of size variation or whatnot then uh, it might be better to um, uh, to just go and let it uh, let it simulate over more frames 
It's a bit like that in D Force as well. Oh, D Force. We might not get to D Force today, but we could try D Force tomorrow. I don't mind. So we've got some additional wrinkles here. I might go and switch this over to GPU simulation. That'll be a bit faster and less accurate. And I can just go and uh, get some of these wrinkles out, or at least die trying. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is much faster, but it's also less accurate. So you can see what happens to the collar. It we can bring it back. That's that's cool. It's just that now it's almost like real time. If I want to go and uh, make any any adjustments here to Mrs. Chow's dress, maybe she's gonna get the dress down a little bit further, and maybe we'll just leave all the wrinkles in here. I don't know. Yeah, the collar, this is happening because of the GPU simulation. So it's not as accurate, but it gets you it gets you faster results for broader strokes. <laughs> Skirt, stay down. Come on. There we go. Okay, imagine that's the Mrs. Chamov now. There's still some some issues here. I think Travis said that. Uh, Travis Davids, also a wonderful man to watch what he's doing with Marvelous Design. Very, very cool. He says that the simulation is one thing, but then he spent so much time taming this beast. Yeah, look, I've, I've ruined something now here. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's a shame. I've pulled the dress through the zipper. And that's uh, that's unfortunate. Don't think I can fix that. I might have to stop. I mean, look at that. I'm ruining it now. <laughs> that's terrible. And maybe she's got wonky dress. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go and do this again, huh? <laughs> How about that? Let's go switch this back to normal, and then go and uh, and bring the Mrs. Chalmorph in one more time. Unless this is settling it out now. Now I've ruined it now. <laughs> This is another way that that's another thing that you can do with the with the history panel. So if I it remembers every every pull I make, I believe, within reason. So see if I can find the the portion before I've ruined it. Otherwise, I'll just I'll just do it again. That's probably easiest. There we go. I think this is now this is still ruined. Where was it fixed? It takes a moment for it to pop into place. If I, in fact, have something that is... Uh, there we go. Before I switched on the fast GPU. I'm just going to leave it like this. I'll leave it like this. Okay, that's the Mrs. Chamov now. I'll go and export her out. OBJ selected. And I'll go over the Mrs. Chamov. Fit morph, yes. Same as before. It is, yes, it's less accurate. That's exactly that. That's exactly right, Peace Master. Less accurate, but gets you kind of broader strokes, uh, but not often, it doesn't, doesn't always work, as, as this example showed. Yeah, there's another, there's the, the third option is actually, I don't know if we have the third and the fourth option. We have the fitting accurate, so this is even slower. That's also using CPU, but that's mega accurate. So if you needed it for uh, real life clothing, not recommended for, I think, was it in, in animations this is being used by default? Yeah, so this takes even longer, but it gives you even more accurate results. It's kind of nice that we have an option there. I, I, do, I do like that. Edit object Morph Loader Pro. Mrs. Chow. Have you remembered? Vertices only. The name is here. Make unique. We'll use deltas only. And we'll use reverse deformations. And that was it, right? I think that's that's all we needed to we needed to do. See it pop into place. Boom! There we go. It's done it. There, that is nice. Now Mrs. Chamov is also available. Currently used on the Genesis figure, and the more or less I dial in Mrs. Chow, we now have an accurate morph. 
That's awesome. I like it. Let's do a pause morph now with Marvelous Designer. I think that was a good suggestion. Was it Moogler, I think? Weight maps and bones, right. Yes, I think we might have to postpone that. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, if I can. So I think tomorrow I'd like to take a crack at setting Deforce up for this. But uh, let's do one last morph just for a pose. And just any any of the, maybe any of the included um, Genesis 8 starter poses might might work as a demo. Or maybe something extreme like the adventurer. Let's go back to the adventurer poses. That was actually quite nice. Just because they're a little bit more extreme and they have distorted the dress uh, quite nicely. So like this one, for example, this is kind of cool. So if you have Marvelous Designer, this is this is actually a good example. So the, the skirt is too far off her leg. This distorts like crazy. It's all, you know, it's one of those things. Now, so with, with poses, it's... Um, it's a little different than with uh, with full body morphs because the poses they don't follow the dress so what you probably want to do is export the dress in this position and this may or may not work uh, but you want to probably export the dress and the figure in this position not so much the, the dress sorry the figure in this position and uh, then dial in that morph but not fit the dress to the figure it's uh, it's difficult to explain. Let me show you what happens. If I go to the dress now and I right click and say fit dress to, I see that it is uh, fitted to Genesis 8 female. It's also parented. We'll leave it parented. That's cool. But if I set this to none and hit accept, uh, watch what happens. The dress just goes back into this, its normal position. Um, so when I fit it, that studio is trying to make it follow along and for full body morphs that works quite well like for mrs chow that worked really well it would try to fit it but if it can find a morph that says ah the mrs chow morph should be used like this then it knows what to do but with the pose it's different with the pose there are no pose morphs as such so i don't have a morph for every single of these um these poles that I have in the figure they're just joint rotations essentially so what I'll have to do I'll go and uh, have to unfit my dress because if I if I do fit my dress with the marvelous designer poles applied it's gonna be you know it's gonna be crazy so I'm gonna go and uh, make the dress invisible just select my figure and this is gonna be my my posed figure now so export just like we had before uh, maybe I should make a note of what that was so this was the ad pose 03 i'll just i'll just call it the same thing so ad pose 03 i could probably instead of fit morphs make myself another folder here and call it pose morphs just because i know what that means ad pose 03 i'll save the figure there just as we did before and this is going to be slightly different now. So first of all, I'll go back to to here so that I start with a fresh, clean slate. Grab myself a fresh version of the avatar, which in our case was Genesis 8 unmorphed. There she is, perfect. And now I'll go and add my... my... Um, I might leave this strip panel. I'm gonna go and add the the morph target to the figure again. This time from the from the pose folder here. This is now because it's such an extreme pose. Sorry, <laughs> figure add obj. Morph target. Because it's a relatively extreme pose, I might set this to 60 frames, just because the interpolation might might work better. So you see the avatar take on the shape of the pose, but you'll also see some weird artifacts. And it, I don't know why Marvelous Designer does that. So while this interpolation happens, it's not like an animation as such. It's just a it's just shift in vertices and it doesn't really do it in 3D space. If you look at her fingers, they look creepy to a certain extent. And that's just because it just shifts the vertices um, 
as it sees fit. So it doesn't really do it in 3D space. It doesn't really do this as such. It just puts vertices from there to where they need to be. And the interpolation looks creepy, but that's cool. We're, we're okay with that. It's just that, um, you know, if you do see some weird artifacts during this interpolation, uh, that, that'll be why. There, cool. Dress, nice. I'll go, just like before, I'll go and press the space bar to just let it settle down a little bit. And once we're happy, let's go and select all the pieces again and export OBJ selected. And uh, this time I might, I might also oversave this. Let's go oversave this and hit, uh, hit save. Just like before and now we're also using morph loader to bring this in but the only difference is that we're not fitting the dress so the, the dress is now essentially hanging loose as it were in the scene but as soon as i add my morph and crank it up to this pose it'll it'll look great so let me show you what i mean so in this case i'll go over here pose morphs and I think in this case, it's it's a little different in regards to options. So I think override, I can make it unique in this case. It, it, I don't think it matters in this case. Let me let me try both. But I don't think I want to reverse the deformation. So I think I'll need to leave that as it is. And when I do that, the calculation is a bit faster. And nothing seems to have happened. And that's because on the dress, I need to dial in my my pose manually. And when I do, it fits exactly. Also, that is not a good idea. So let's go and make that slider uh, so that it doesn't go into the negative. There. So this is now not a fitted dress. It doesn't, in Das Studio, it doesn't fit to the figure as, as with the fit to dialogue, but it is an accurate fit because that is what Marvelous Designer has simulated. So that's kind of, that's, that's kind of how this works. So if you had, uh, multiple poses that you're going to use then you'd have all of these as as morph dials and what you dial in on your figure you need to also dial in on your dress but manually it's not going to auto follow if you know what i mean so if i were to go and do this now if i go and fit the dress which is currently unfitted if i go and fit that to genesis 8 it look terrible and that is because the the pose morph isn't isn't an auto follow morph on the figure as long as you remember, you know, not to do that in certain in certain instances, you're you're good. So don't fit it, but crank up the morph manually, and then you know, then then you're there. So then, if you had another pose, and I'm happy to show that as well, maybe with the second pose from the Adventures Pack, maybe this one here. If we go and say 80 pose or five, we do that, and once again the dress. Uh, we don't need to really do anything uh, with it. We just need to make sure this gets gets dialed out and the new morph gets dialed in. Export 80 pause. This is 05 now, just so we know. And once you get into the groove of it, it's actually quite it's it's neat and neat and tidy to uh, to do morphs like that. It's the only thing I haven't found an exact uh, workaround uh, for is a way to uh, to bring in an un to revert back to the unmorphed avatar. It's just that I've had issues with with adding a morph target after adding a morph target. If you know what I mean, it's uh, I, I wish there was a way to to just go and bring this in as a just revert back to this. Uh, without you know, with a, with a shortcut key, that's kind of what I'd uh, what what I'd like to see. So pause morph, any pause or five. Uh, once again, we'll go with morph target over sixty frames. That's cool. Yes, could be that the dress isn't isn't stretchy enough. That's per that's possible. With weight maps, yes, that is that is also possible. Um, Chris probably knows more about it than uh, than I do. I think one easy fix is to just apply deforce to the dress and let 
when you're distributing the product, let Das Studio figure it out. So users who don't have Marvelous Designer don't have this luxury. But users who do have Marvelous Designer and who are happy to work that way like I am, uh, I don't really miss D4 so much because I find that simulating like this is way easier for me than to have D4 work this out and do weight maps and all that. So Marvelous Designer simulation engine is way, way better than D4 is. And it takes care more of wrinkles. So I find that D4 often uh, melts out things that good detail that was once in Marvelous Designer that no longer is there as soon as you apply DeForce because it just goes and smooths everything out. So the weight map you can you can smooth it out on the on the skirt legs, but it's still not going to give you as good a fit as um, as as Marvelous Designer would or even as DeForce would. dress here we go control click to bring the whole dress back and nothing but the dress and nothing but the dress uh, edit object morph loader pro and this is also this is important to uh, to remember these bringing in a morph like this is, has different settings than a full figure morph so we can uh, we don't have to use the deformations i think make unique or deltas i think in this case it doesn't really make a difference but reverse deformations needs to be off uh, now because we're not reversing anything uh, pose 80 pose 5 there's a goal look at that perfect now that fits Alrighty. Yes, yeah, absolutely, Peacemaster. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yes, that is what I like using it for. I don't. I'm not big on making clothes. I always find that very, very fascinating how people do it. But it's uh, just for the simulation engine. It's it's uh, it's fantastic. Absolutely. Do you know? I think that's all I have for today. We have um, we have these couple of poses here. That's nice. We have a couple of full body morphs. Let me go and dial these. Whoa, that's, that needs to go and be uh, zero again. Zero and zero. Now we go and fit the dress again to Genesis. <laughs> this is kind of the before and after. The top part worked quite well. So in regards to DeForce, it, so if we were to add DeForce to this, let's try this tomorrow, actually. Let's continue this tomorrow. So I'll, I'll go and leave the top part intact and just add DeForce to the bottom, just to the skirt, so that uh, DeForce can sort this out, see if we can make that happen tomorrow. Um, for now, let's go and give you uh, the, the regular pose again. How do I do that again? There's a way to, to restore you to an A pose, T pose. I think was that under figure F restore figure is that how it works that yes there we go that's that's how that works uh, other exciting things we've made today were I believe the breast correction bits and pieces I don't remember which ones but there were some some breast things were involved do you remember which ones I can't Let's see. There's a couple. There's a couple hidden skirt length. We made that happen. That wasn't that wasn't great. But as an example of how you can make adjustment morphs with hexagon quite quickly, that is that is definitely working. So you can do that. We've talked about poses. We've also had. Let's go show hidden quickly and see what we what the things were that we that we added here under morph loader. I can't remember. What were they? Fit morphs. We had breast heavy and uh, just just breast heavy and Mrs. Chow. There we go. Breast heavy. Let's let's have a look at her handiwork. I always like that. Handiwork. Genesis. Heavy breast heavy. There we go. Perfect. So breast heavy morph works great. And doesn't distort. We might do a couple more um, tomorrow and deforce, and then I'll go and package this whole product up and upload it to my coffee store. So yes, yeah, let's, let's use a few more breast morphs tomorrow so that they don't distort. 
that you can use them. And then there's also Mrs. Chow. Mrs. Chow. I like Mrs. Chow, very cool. And now she can wear this retro dress, this is nice. Also, come up, if you're visiting tomorrow, come up with a funky name, that's your homework. Come up with a funky name that we can call this dress. I mean, stream dress one isn't, isn't great. Maybe we'll call it, I don't know, uh, perhaps retro dress or beige retro dress or something like that. Let's see. Let's see if we can if we can collectively come up with a funky name. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much for the super chat donation biscuits. I appreciate that, my friends. I will see you hopefully tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, to pick this project up for part two. A bit of deforce. I'll see if we can talk about the uh, the weight maps on the uh, on the bones. I, I don't. I'm not that familiar with these bits and pieces, Mugler, but uh, I'm happy to dig in and um, you know find out together with you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.